This is an example of potential outcomes and average treatment effect with the running charter school example from the textbook. So in this case, the treatment, and I put that in quotes because um, treatment is a very broad word in uh, the statistical setting. The treatment is whether or not a student attends a charter school as opposed to a conventional public school. And the outcome we're interested in is whether eventually that student graduates from college. So here we have a binary outcome where y equals 1 if the student does eventually get a college degree and y equals 0 otherwise. So the potential outcomes framework idea, uh, you can think of it like there are these two parallel universes. So there's uh, one universe where a particular individual does not go to the charter school, and another universe where everything is identical except they do go to the charter school. Um, so we'll sort of gloss over some details about, you know, can you really keep everything constant and things like that. Um, but that's the general idea is in this treatment effects setup, we're trying to hold constant every other part of the universe except the one treatment for the one individual. So what we can do is we can uh, think about the untreated potential outcome. So y superscript u, u for untreated. In this case, that would be not going to the charter school. Or the treated potential outcome, y t, t for treated. And if we think about the possible values, as I said, because y is binary, there's only four possible combinations. So we could imagine one particular type of student where regardless of what kind of school they go to, they do not graduate from college. So in neither parallel universe do they graduate from college. You can imagine another type of student where uh, in the untreated universe, they do not graduate, but in the universe where they go to the charter school, they do graduate from college. We could imagine another type of student where it's the opposite. So they uh, have a 1 and a 0 instead of 0, 1. And then the final type of student where it doesn't matter what type of school they go to, they will graduate from college either way. As I said, we can think of this as sort of four different types of student. We could say you know, type A, type B, type C, type D. So there's, within each type, individuals can be very different in other ways in terms of their families, their parents, um, their other activities, uh, but they have the same potential outcomes. And we can imagine then within the population that we're interested in, uh, each type takes up some portion of that population. So just for the sake of example, to get some concrete numbers, we can imagine the probabilities are 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, and 0 0.3. So that's the potential outcome setup. And then the reason for, you know, <laughs> coming up with this sort of weird thought experiment where there's a parallel universe 
is because we can think about using that to define a causal effect or a treatment effect. So we can imagine, you know, if we're comparing across these universes and we look at the difference in the outcome variable between the two universes for a particular individual, that we've sort of isolated by construction the effect of the treatment on the outcome. Because remember, everything else we're assuming is the same in these two universes except the treatment. So it must be that it was the treatment causing the difference in outcomes. So in other words, if we take the treated potential outcome and we subtract the untreated outcome, that is the treatment effect for a particular individual. So we can go back and think about first type A. Well, for type A, they don't graduate regardless of the type of school, so they have zero effect. Makes sense. Uh, similarly, type D at the bottom they do graduate regardless of their school, so also zero effect. For type B, now yt is 1, yu is 0, so 1 minus 0 is 1, so they have a positive effect, treatment effect, um, in that when they go to the charter school, that leads to them graduating from college, and when they don't, they don't. And then there's also this type C, where the treatment actually hurts them. So their yt minus yu is actually negative 1. So they have a worse outcome in the treated universe. So if Hypothetically, we could observe these treatment effects directly for individuals. We can just look at that and uh, compute things based on that. The problem is, as we said, these are coming from two different universes, and we only can observe one universe. For example, if we have a type B individual who uh, does go to a charter school, then we observe the treated potential outcome, but we don't observe the untreated potential outcome, and we have no way of knowing if it's a type B or type C or D, etc. I guess type B or D. Or Similarly, if we observe someone who uh, does not go to charter school and does graduate college, we don't know in this counterfactual hypothetical parallel universe where they went to the charter school, uh, did they graduate college or not. So because we can only observe one or the other potential outcome, we can't ever compute this treatment effect difference for a particular individual. So, hypothetically, if we could, we could just directly compute the mean. So we'll do that over here. So if we take the average or the mean of these individual treatment effects. Then we'll use our usual mean formula, so summing the probability times the uh, value. So if we do that, we will get 0.3 times 0 plus 0.3 times 1 in the second row plus 0.1 times negative 1 for the third row plus 0.3 times 0. 
and if we just plug that in uh, to the first term and the last term will zero out. So we'll be left with 0.3 minus 0.1, which is 0 0.2. So in this particular imaginary example, there's a positive uh, average treatment effect of the charter school attendance on college graduation. Um, in this case, since y is this dummy variable, this is like a 20 percentage point uh, increase in uh, college graduation rate. We can also see, uh, as the textbook mentioned, because of this nice linearity property of the mean, this is actually equal to the mean of yt minus the mean of yu. So this will be helpful in practice because, as I said, we can't directly observe these individual level treatment effects. But in some cases, we can uh, learn about the means of yu and yt separately. So we can see this point 0.2 is also equal to the difference uh, between the mean treated outcome and mean untreated outcome. So if we look at the means here at the bottom, mean. so again using our usual formula, We'll be summing the probability times the value for each row. You can see for yu, the first two rows have zeros, so those terms will disappear. And we'll just get 0.1 times 1 plus 0.3 times 1, which is 0.4. And similarly, for the treated potential outcomes, the first and the third rows have zeros, so those will zero out. And we'll just end up with 0.3 times 1 plus another 0.3 times 1, which is 0.6. So we'll end up again. Point two. So in practice, you don't need to recompute things both ways because these are in general always equal to each other. But at least for me, I, I find it nice to see some concrete examples. So to provide some reassurance that yes, this formula, this equality is actually true. Um, so again, regardless of which way you compute it, we get an average treatment effect of 0.2 in this uh, charter school example.